For centuries, sailors whispered of a region where compasses spun wild and ships vanished, birthing the myth of the Bermuda Triangle, a place so feared it earned the name Devil's Triangle. Despite legends of dozens lost without trace, scientists now reveal something astonishing. This infamous zone is one of the busiest, best-studied stretches of ocean on Earth. So why has its reputation endured? The truth about how the myth began and what really lies beneath the waves changes everything you thought you knew. Draw a line from Miami to Bermuda, then sweep it down to San Juan, Puerto Rico, and back again. This triangle floating over the Western Atlantic covers anywhere from half a million to one and a half million square miles, depending on who holds the pencil. No official chart marks its boundaries. The US Board on Geographic Names does not even recognize it. Yet the area inside those imagined lines forms a crossroads for the modern world. Hundreds of ships and planes pass through every day, connecting North America, the Caribbean, and Europe. Cargo freighters, cruise liners, fishing vessels, private yachts, commercial jets, each one traces a path across these waters. The sea here is not empty or abandoned. It is among the busiest corridors on the planet. The so-called Bermuda Triangle stretches over shallow banks, deep trenches, and a maze of islands, making navigation both vital and challenging. Its vague edges mean that stories of loss or disaster can be placed inside or outside the triangle at will, depending on how the map is drawn. This flexibility has helped the legend grow, but it also means that the mystery often starts with the map itself. Before tales of vanished ships and strange signals, there is first a shape, a triangle drawn not by nature but by imagination. Long before the triangle had a name, sailors crossing these waters whispered of unpredictable forces. Logbooks from the 17th century record compasses that spun without warning, needles drifting away from north and bearings lost in the haze. Some captains blamed the sea itself, convinced the waters near Bermuda were haunted by something more than storms. Shipwreck records from this era show clusters of losses along the reefs and shoals, their causes left blank or scrawled with a single word, vanished. With no satellites or reliable charts, a vessel could disappear between ports and leave only rumours behind. The region's reputation as a vexed sea grew with each lost ship, especially as survivors described sudden calms, odd lights on the horizon, or entire fleets thrown off course by invisible hands. Yet when modern historians combed through Lloyd's lists and shipping archives, they found that many of the most famous ghost ship tales, stories of abandoned vessels found adrift and crews missing without trace, were either set in other oceans or had no basis in the original records. The image of a cursed zone where ships faded into mist began as much in the gaps of old paperwork as in the facts themselves. The legend's roots reached deep into centuries where mystery was the rule, not the exception, and every blank in the log became fertile ground for the unknown. A handful of disappearances gave the Bermuda Triangle its reputation. The stories begin with ships, but not the ghostly derelicts of legend. Maritime historians, including Marvin Barash, have shown that no 19th century vessel vanished here under truly mysterious circumstances, despite what the old tales say. Instead, the first case to grip public attention came in 1918, when the USS Cyclops, a US Navy collier, left Barbados for Baltimore with more than 300 men and a cargo of manganese ore. She sent no distress call. Her last confirmed sighting was in calm weather, her engines already troubled. Searchers scoured the route for weeks. No wreckage surfaced, and no explanation satisfied families or officials. The Cyclops became the largest non-combat loss of life in US Navy history and speculation filled the gaps left by silence. A generation later, the skies became part of the story. On December 5th, 1945, five Navy bombers, Flight 19, took off from Fort Lauderdale for a routine training mission. Radio logs captured their confusion as compasses spun and landmarks vanished in a haze of deteriorating weather. The entire squadron disappeared. The rescue planes sent after them vanished as well leaving only a slick of oil and more questions. Commercial aviation added its own mysteries. In 1948, the Star Tiger, a British passenger plane, vanished on approach to Bermuda. The following year, its sister aircraft, Star Ariel, disappeared on a clear day between Bermuda and Jamaica. No distress calls, no debris, no survivors. 
These cases, separated by years and miles, became the backbone of the Triangle's legend, each one a fragment missing its final page. By the middle of the 20th century, the Bermuda Triangle had become more than a patch of ocean. It was a headline. In September 1950, a Miami Herald reporter named Edward Van Winkle Jones published an article grouping a string of disappearances between Florida and the Caribbean, calling it a sea of mystery. The idea caught on. Over the next decade, magazine writers and broadcasters began connecting the dots, sometimes stretching the region's boundaries to fit the story. Then, in February 1964, the term Bermuda Triangle appeared for the first time in Argosy magazine. Vincent Gaddis drew sharp corners on the map and gave the legend its name. His article, The Deadly Bermuda Triangle, turned scattered incidents into a pattern, one that seemed to demand explanation. Ten years later, Charles Berlitz's book, The Bermuda Triangle, landed on shelves. Berlitz described ships and planes vanishing without a trace, compasses spinning wildly and strange forces at work beneath the waves. The book sold over 20 million copies, was translated into dozens of languages and inspired documentaries and films around the world. But Berlitz's stories did not always hold up to scrutiny. He moved accidents into the triangle that happened elsewhere, changed weather reports and left out distress calls. The more dramatic the tale, the more it spread. As the myth grew, so did the pushback. In 1975, librarian and researcher Larry Kusher published The Bermuda Triangle Mystery Solved. Cushy traced the original reports, compared them to shipping records, and found a pattern of exaggeration, error, and outright invention. The Triangle's reputation, he showed, was less about unsolved mysteries and more about how stories are told and retold until they take on a life of their own. Beneath the surface of the Bermuda Triangle lies a world that few have seen and even fewer understand. The seafloor here is anything but flat. It stretches out in broad, shallow shelves known as the Bahama Banks, vast underwater plateaus built from limestone and coral, sometimes just a few meters below the waves. These banks are riddled with blue holes, vertical shafts that plunge hundreds of feet down, some wider than a city block. Early divers and scientists like Dr. Robert Dill mapped these features in the 1970s, documenting how the entrances vanish into darkness, branching into winding caves and tunnels. Modern bathymetric surveys now reveal the full complexity, steep drop-offs, hidden canyons, and sudden cliffs that fall away into the abyss. At the edge of the banks, the sea floor drops sharply. In some places, it falls from shallow water to depths of over 4,000 meters in a matter of miles. Further east, the Puerto Rico Trench slices through the Atlantic, reaching depths greater than 8,000 meters, the deepest point in the entire ocean outside the Pacific. The slope here is so steep that a shipwreck or a downed plane can slip from the shelf and vanish into the darkness below, far beyond the reach of most search teams or sonar. Even modern technology struggles. Debris can be swept into submarine canyons or buried in shifting sediment, scattered by landslides or hidden in labyrinthine caves. The blue holes themselves are natural traps. Ships that founder on the banks may break up, with pieces drawn into these vertical shafts by currents or gravity. Once inside, wreckage is quickly lost from view, and silt clouds stirred by storms or tidal flows can bury evidence for decades. Some blue holes connect to underwater cave networks that run for miles, making recovery nearly impossible. For families searching for answers, the seafloor's architecture is a source of heartbreak. It is not just the vastness of the ocean that hides the missing, it is the shape of the ground beneath a landscape designed by nature to keep its secrets. The Triangle's true mystery is not always what happens on the surface, but what lies hidden below, where wrecks and clues are swallowed by a shifting, silent maze. Above the hidden slopes and blue holes, the ocean surface in the Bermuda Triangle is in constant motion. The Gulf Stream, a powerful river of warm water, races northward at speeds over five feet per second, faster than most Olympic swimmers. This current does not flow in a straight line. It twists, loops, and sheds spinning eddies, sometimes sweeping debris or small boats miles off course in a single day. Oceanographers tracking drifter boys have watched as objects vanish from one search grid and reappear far outside it, carried by invisible hands. Weather here is just as restless. 
Trade winds from the east collide with fronts from the north, stirring up sudden squalls that can turn calm seas into chaos in minutes. Pilots and captains describe walls of rain that appear out of nowhere, blotting out the horizon and sending wind gusts that slam against hulls and wings. These squalls are not just brief showers. Some pack microbursts, explosive downdrafts that strike the water with hurricane force, flattening waves and flipping small planes or boats before the sky clears again. Then there are the waves themselves. In the right mix of wind, current and seafloor change, the ocean can build rogue waves, giants that rise two or three times higher than the waves around them. In laboratory tanks and satellite records, scientists have measured rogue waves reaching heights of 60 to 100 feet. These walls of water can appear without warning, lasting only a few moments before collapsing back into the sea. Survivors of such encounters speak of ships lurching, hatches torn open, or decks swept clean in seconds. Most vessels never see them coming. Dr. Simon Boxall, an oceanographer at the University of Southampton, notes that the Bermuda Triangle is a meeting place for some of the fastest currents and most volatile weather on Earth. When these forces align, the sea can become unpredictable and violent, sometimes with no trace left behind. In this part of the Atlantic, movement is constant and memory is short. A ship or plane lost here may drift for days or be scattered by waves and wind before searchers even arrive. The ocean's fury is often brief, but its effects can be permanent. Navigation in such a place is never just a matter of charts and compasses. It is a race against forces that can change in an instant. Compasses have always played a starring role in Bermuda Triangle legend, blamed for steering ships and planes into oblivion. Yet the real story is written in the subtle difference between magnetic north and true north, a gap that shifts by both place and time. In the early 20th century, the Agonic Line, where these two Norths briefly align, ran through the Western Atlantic. Sailors and pilots crossing this invisible boundary could see their compass readings change by several degrees in a single day, especially if they failed to adjust for local variation. Even a small error, left unchecked, could nudge a vessel far off course over hundreds of miles. Radio logs from lost flights like Flight 19 capture this confusion in real time. Pilots argued over headings, compasses acting strange, and navigation slipped away as weather closed in. Investigations later showed that what seemed like instrument failure was often simple miscalculation, magnified by stress and poor visibility. For ships, the maze of islands, shifting currents, and patchy landmarks made dead reckoning risky business, especially before the era of GPS and reliable radio fixes. The search for exotic answers has produced its own set of myths. One theory claims that sudden eruptions of methane gas from the seafloor could bubble up and sink ships by reducing water density. But USGS surveys across the region have found no evidence of major methane releases in the last 15,000 years. The so-called Bimini Road, once hyped as the ruins of Atlantis, is simply a natural formation of beach rock shaped by tides and time. UFO sightings and time warp stories linger in popular culture, but when researchers dig into the details, they uncover a trail of ordinary explanations, unpredictable weather, navigation errors, and the relentless challenge of crossing a restless sea. The mysteries often begin with a compass needle and end with human fallibility. Insurance companies with billions on the line have no patience for legend. Lloyds of London, the world's oldest marine insurer, charges no extra premium for ships or planes passing through the Bermuda Triangle. Their actuarial tables show the risk here is no greater than in any other major shipping lane. US Coast Guard reviews echo this. Incident rates, when measured against the sheer volume of traffic, match the global average for busy ocean corridors. The numbers simply do not support the myth. Modern technology has stripped away much of the unknown. Satellites now scan the Atlantic around the clock, tracking sea surface temperatures, wave heights, and the shifting arms of the Gulf Stream in real time. High-resolution bathymetric mapping reveals every canyon, shelf, and blue hole on the seafloor, features that once hid wrecks for generations. Search and rescue teams rely on predictive drift models, powered by ocean current data and weather forecasts, to narrow search grids and speed up recovery. What used to be a needle in a haystack search now unfolds with mathematical precision. NOAA's official stance is clear. 
there is no evidence that mysterious disappearances occur with any greater frequency in the Bermuda Triangle than in any other large, well-traveled area of the ocean. The tools of modern science, remote sensing, advanced modeling, and global communication have made the triangle less mysterious and more ordinary. Where stories once filled the gaps, data now draws the boundaries. The region's reputation endures, but the numbers tell a different story. In the eyes of insurers, scientists, and search teams, these waters are remarkable only for how much traffic they bear, not for how many ships and planes they claim. Today, the Bermuda Triangle stands as a testament to how myth thrives where uncertainty persists. Science shows this stretch of ocean is no deadlier than any other. Our fascination endures because the unknown still unsettles us. As we map every current and cloud, the real mystery becomes our willingness to let legends eclipse evidence. Sometimes the most powerful force is the story we choose to believe. Share your thoughts below.